accord. Amen. Let's pray. Father God, I thank you so much for what you're doing in our lives. Yeah. Lord, we are just looking forward to all the beautiful things that you're you're wanting to do. And Lord, thank you for this teaching that we can get this and we can start growing in all this. Lord, this is it just got me all sorts of excited here. So Lord, I just thank you. You're so good to us and what you have done for us and to us and bringing us around and through us. Lord, it's just amazing. So be with us now, Lord. May we listen to your spirit. May we get this. May our minds be totally open. And for all this, Lord, we just give you the praise and the glory in Jesus' precious name. Amen. 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 So praise God. We are getting ready to, now this is actually our fourth message on it, and we're going to finally today start touching on the fruit, but we've been just getting ready for it, but we are, are teaching on the fruit of the Spirit. Are we going to record and this? It is recording right now. Okay. Didn't hear it say recording? I did. Okay. Didn't anybody else hear it? I That's heard okay. it. I did hear it. Yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, the issue about the fruit of the spirit, though, I want to do this just a little bit different than um, other things I've heard about the fruit of the spirit, because what I'm trying to get us to understand the aspect of growing it out. Mm, okay? okay. I want to, it's not about just us having it, but us doing something with it. Okay. To make, make this thing functional. So as review from last week, gaining the good fruit. Because we know that we are the ones who make the tree either good or corrupt. And that's something we really hit last week hard, is that who does the making? We do. We do. Because it says, make the tree good, and it'll have good fruit. Make the tree bad, and it'll have bad fruit. Okay? Otherwise, we're blaming God for us having bad fruit because he didn't make us good. Mm -hmm. No, no. I dare anybody to challenge me on that one. We'll just have ourselves a little set to right there. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> but we have been determining the law of choice. The law of choice is still something that is, I want to keep hammering on this, that God has made it so that we always have a choice. And that's a law that he has worked on us. He's made that happen. And clear from the beginning, we've had the law of choice. Mm -hmm. So do I choose the fruit or the process that brings the fruit? Good question. Um, yeah. Oh. It is both, but it's mostly the process that we have to choose. Choosing the fruit, I've known two people who did that and don't get anything. because What are they choosing? Okay. Well, if they're not choosing the process to grow the fruit, it's not going to work. So that's kind of what I'm saying. Anyway, in Galatians chapter 5, 22 through 23, it does say this, but the fruit of the spirit is, and it does the list, love, joy, peace, long-suffering, usefulness, goodness, faith, meekness, self-control, Against such things, there is not a law. Remember that the fruit is singular, not plural. These are not the fruits of the Spirit. This is the fruit hmm. of the Spirit, okay? Makes a big difference because he determines so much. But what are, we, what are we wanting? We're wanting the Spirit himself. Okay, is there law anywhere against peace? That's kind of the whole reason we have laws is yeah. try to bring peace yeah. But so there's no law against love. There's no law against joy. Um, at times, in some churches, I feel like there's a law against faith. <laughs> that was a, a little editorial comment on my part right there. Okay. But um, these are all extremely desirable, every one of them. Okay. How do I get them? How do I get them? Mm -hmm. Well, the how do I get them comes in the very next verse. The very next verse tells us how to get them. And we're going to be hammering on this today. Galatians 5.24 says, But the ones belonging to Christ crucified the flesh with his passions and lusts. This is the issue. Because if we're not going to crucify our flesh, we'll never get the fruit of the Spirit out of us. How do you get the fruit of the Spirit? There comes a crucifixion that goes with it. So this is going to be, and I, I did this last time, and I know that I said these words and I said this stuff, but everybody looks like, they just kind of zone out when I start talking about this. But the ones belonging to Christ crucified the flesh. That's in the aorist indicative active. See, just, all I have to do is say that and everybody goes, huh? here's what that means. It means it's not continuous. It can show a punctilar action or a 
a single point in time that it did happen in the past. It's an assertion of fact. It's done by the subject, not to him. So this is something you were doing. The ones belong to Christ, crucified. It's something you do. Crucified the flesh with passions and lusts. Now, we are going to get into this when and who thing today pretty heavy. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is going to be a lot of fun. But the issue is we have the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in us. We have the tree of flesh. We have the tree of damage. We have the tree of death. Okay. How do we take it? from that tree into a good tree, okay? Very, very important is, I love it. I do all these graphics and nobody sees these graphics because they're all writing writing notes. And so it's like, hey, it's okay, okay. But the, the way you get from the bad tree to the good tree is the other tree. Right. Okay. <laughs> that was worth looking at. That okay. was beautiful, yeah. Okay. Galatians 2.20 says this. I have been crucified with Christ and I live. Yet no longer I, but Christ lives in me. And the life I now live in the flesh, I live by faith toward the Son of God, the one loving me and giving himself over on my behalf. I have been crucified with Christ. Okay. What is that? Well, that's the perfect indicative passive. Thank you, Lee, for all this wonderful Greek. Yeah, just, but it means it's a process that took place in the past with results that have continued to the presence. I was crucified with Christ. And it happened in the past, and now it has continual results that are continually happening. Mm -hmm. It's going on and on and on, okay? And uh, it's an assertion of fact, but it's done to the subject, not by him. You say, well, wait a minute. The last one says it's done by the subject, not mm -hmm. to him. <laughs> We're going to have some fun. It's describing back and forth. Who does what and where and when? But it says, I have been crucified with Christ, yet I live. Now, that I live is in the present indicative active. Sure it is, Lee. But it means as long as it is now. It's an assertion of fact. It's good now. No, no, I mean right now. No, no, right now. No, here's when it's going to be good. It's right now. Okay, so. Okay. As long as it is now, it's an assertion of fact. I am living right now okay done by the subject i am doing the living now, come on this is really important who's doing the living me me yet no longer i but christ lives in me so there's going to be something mm -hmm. that i am bringing the life of christ to continue and the life i now live in the flesh i live by faith toward the son of god the one loving me and giving himself over my behalf my faith in him is what's keeping this thing continual mm -hmm. Okay, and trust me, we'll get to a point where we will explain it all point blank. Here we go. Colossians 3, 1 through 2. <clears throat> I'm doing a grammatical problem right here because every gr grammar Nazi right now would say, no, you can't do that. But I did do it. Here we go. Yeah, so that, you would do it. I Yeah, well, here's the problem. It should start with if then you were raised with Christ, but it is a second class conditional which doesn't mean there's a real question about it and it's still and so people say well you can't just say sense and they all will say that and all the uh, grammar things and i go so. yes you can so yeah. i just do it since then you're raised with christ makes absolute total sense mm -hmm. not, that's not a pun sense and sense it's okay Be yeah. nice. okay but since then you were raised with christ which shows a fact has happened right okay so if this happened and it is true, is what the if means. Right. If it happened and it is true. Right. So since it happened, you were raised with Christ. Now, why do I get so sticky on all this grammar stuff? No, you need to. Is because it changes the right. meanings of the passages. And as we get into these things, you're going to find out that there's things that I had to do. There's things that Jesus had to do. There's things that happened in the past that continue. All this stuff is very, very, very important. Yeah. Okay. But you were raised with Christ. Seek the things above where Christ is sitting at the right of God. Where are you? Sitting in the right of God, in him, in the heavenly realms. So this is not hard. We're seeking him. If, did you hear that if? Mm -hmm. Anybody hear that if? Mm -hmm. If 
we're cognizant of where we are. Mm -hmm. It's easy to seek him as he's sitting in the right hand of God if we're cognizant about the fact that we are in him. It's easy to seek him when religion comes along and it says, no, you can't make it up there. All of a sudden, you can't access Jesus. Right. Oh, wait a minute. I can access Jesus. It has nothing to do with religion. Christ is sitting there. I'm sitting there. Then it says, think the way they do above, not the way they do on earth. Mm. Think of the things in heaven, not the things on earth. Right. If anybody were to actually do that, it would change your entire life. Mm -hmm. Because we do a lot of thinking about things on earth, about earthly things. And we just, it just grabs our minds and away so we go. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who kind of know this, I've been playing with imagination. Okay. Right. I've been playing with how this works. And I looked up all these different words and changed different stuff. Wow. I have a major thing about that to happen this week. And I'm not going to tell you about it. Okay. But it happened this week. I went, <laughs> now I get I, a little light bulb went on and it was a LED. It was bright and it didn't take much power. So here we go. But he's talking to believers here, only believers. They're the only ones that are seated. You have been raised with Christ. Mm -hmm. Now seek the things above. Right. These things should be natural for someone who has died to the things here. It should be very natural to say, oh, I'm now in the things of heaven. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, when everybody do this, you're going to do this physically. I want you to take one hand and hold it out. Just hold it out. It says the kingdom of heaven is at hand. How close is kingdom of heaven? It's right here. Oh. It's right here. It's, it's manipulatable right within yeah. your arm's reach, which right. means you were now, you are now in heaven. Mm -hmm. And I can verify that. I can prove that. Where is heaven? It's not this thing out there in the cosmos somewhere. Heaven is accessible to you right now where you stand or sit or whatever it is you're doing. Mm -hmm. We've got to know this. We've got to know this. It's, it's massive. Yeah. Okay. yeah, sure. This should be natural to someone who died. If I died to the things here, I should be living to the things there. Where? Right there. Right here. Right there. Okay? It's the things of the spirit realm. Right here now. In the positive spirit realm, we have access to it right now. Mm -hmm. How do I know? You have the Holy Spirit living inside you. Come on. How far are you going to have to go? Nowhere. It's right here. It's in you. Okay. And mm -hmm. I, I know where I wanted to go. because, And I'm not going to get there. But for those of you who are waiting for the second coming of Christ, you're wrong. Okay. Really? I just want to make sure. Yeah. Because the second coming already happened. Wow. We're waiting for the third coming. So I, I know. I love this. See, now she's looking. What? Okay, here we go. Well, later. Okay, for you died. Verse three says, for you died. And your life has been hidden with Christ in God. For you died. It's in the aorist, indicative, active. It's simple action, assertion of fact, done by the subject. You died. Hey, wait a minute. This is done by the subject. It's something you do. You died. This isn't talking about necessarily just your death in Jesus when you got born again. It's about something else you do. Okay. Then it says, and your life has been hidden. Well, this is the perfect indicative passive. It means a process that took place in the past with results of which have continued to the present, an assertion of fact done to the subject and not by him. You died, that's you. Your life has been hidden with Christ, that's him. He is working this. Come on, this is really good. I have been dunked into Christ. He did all this work because I came to him and boom, I have this stuff that's happening to me right now that is functional. Functional, huh. right here, right now. Even as we speak, in the middle of Wheat Ridge, Colorado, or wherever as you are out there in, in Zoom land. Okay. Let's go on to the next verse because it's getting even better. Colossians 3, 4. Whenever Christ, our life, is revealed, then you also be revealed with him in glory. Misunderstood verse. Whenever Christ, our life, is, in the Greek word there, is phanerao, means shows up. Whenever Jesus shows up and is functional, is doing it right here. Whenever Jesus shows up, okay, do we have to have him physically in the room? He is physically, yes, spiritually in the room. Okay. Hey, people try to think that physical is a higher realm than spiritual. No, spiritual is a higher realm. And what's spiritually in the room 
with the physics of that is much higher. Whenever Christ shows up here, then also you will be revealed with him in glory, which tells me that the real you shows up when you die. Hmm. You got to die to your fake self mm -hmm. for the real you to come through. You're so God, you're so funny. Okay. I I love these sentences. They're so confusing. Yeah. Okay, but they're all right off look. So whenever Christ is revealed here and now, then I show up in him. Because I am in him. Christ shows up, I'm in him. Wait a minute. That means in glory shows the condition of the revealing, not the place. People think that we're going to be revealed with him in glory, which means up in heaven, beyond the skies. So after he comes and takes us there, we're going to be revealed with him in glory. That's not glory. Mm -hmm. That's not what it's talking about. It says when Christ shows up here, then I, the real me, shows up in the glory of the situation. I am the glory of the Lord. The glory manifests here and now. Mm -hmm. uh. I hope I'm making sense to people. I'm you making do. piles of sense in my little head, which is a scary thing. Awesome. Okay. I keep asking Roxy if she wants to just, if we could just plug in so she could just plug into my brain and see what's going on. She just refuses to do it. I don't understand. She says, no one wants to run around in that labyrinth. Okay. <laughs> just forget it. Okay. But then it goes on. Verses five through seven says this. Then you put to death your members which are on this earth. Now, wait a minute. Who's doing the work here? Me. We, we are. are. Yeah. Really? Yes. That's mm -hmm. what it's talking about. Yeah. You put to death your members which are on this earth. And then it lists, not an exhaustive list, but it lists five. Fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil lust, and, I, and covetousness, which is idolatry. All of them are idolatry. Because mm, they're about on, you. Yeah. On account of which things the wrath of God is coming on the sons of disobedience, among whom you also walked at one time when you were living in these. You're no longer living in those. And now you get to put to death your members. Wait a minute. I thought you died. Mm -hmm. mm. Oh, no, wait a minute. So there was a death that happened before yeah. that Jesus did, or the Holy Spirit did, or right. God did, or however you want to put it. And then there's a death that happens after that that you do. Because of the station of the flesh. Yeah. So, see, there's yeah, there's a problem, and we're gonna blow up. We're gonna have fun with this. Okay, so this is the crucifixion of the flesh. That's what it's all about. And what do you do? Well, you do it to you. Obviously, you put to death your members, which are on this earth. We have done so much in the word of work of um, identity using this, right? Taking somebody and looking at their identity. Oh, the identity of fornication that's on them, and take them back when they put that identity on, and we get to kill that thing and bury it. Wow, who would have thought that you could actually do that? Okay. Trying to explain to people, what do you do in your ministry? Ah, uh, kill people. That's what I do. <laughs> and you know, that's 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 the way it works. Is I'm just here to help you die. That's that's the way it works. Okay. So verses eight through ten goes on and it says, But now you also put off all these things. The word there for put off is the Greek word apotithemi, mm -hmm. stand off from. Stand off from all these things, wrath, anger, malice, evil speaking, shameful speech out of your mouth. Do not lie to one another, having put off. That's another word. That's the Greek word epekduomai, off, out, sink. Three words put together, off, apo, ek, out, duomai, off, out, sink. You take it off, stretch it out, and drop it, sink, off, out, sink. Do not lie to one another, having put off the old man with his practices and having put on the new. Wow, this is a fun one. This is that other. It's enduomai. Others, apec duomai. Let it sink. This is enduomai, to sink, but to sink into. Okay. I love this sinking into. Okay. Having been renewed in full revelation knowledge, the apognosis, according to the image of the one creating him. God has a creation image of me. And I've got to sink into that image. Okay. Sink into. Um, so one of my favorite pictures of this, this sink into thing is Roxanne. When she's cold, she'll go to bed and she'll throw 5,000 rice bags heated into the bed. Okay. There's only two, but she's, when she gets into that bed and she sinks into it, 
It's just I know exactly what you mean. It's just and she does. She just yeah. man, she puts the covers over and she just sinks into it. It's gonna be warm in here. Just sinks into that. Yes. <laughs> okay. And I've known you get some kids cold and then you grab them and you put them in a great big blanket on it and just, just go right. and they sink into it. Right. That's the word sink into. Okay. You need to sink into the image of who you are in Christ. Sink into that thing. Find comfort there. That's really a big, big thing. Oh, verse 12 and 13. It says, therefore, as elect ones of God, holy and beloved, put on, there it is, sink into a heart of compassion usefulness, humility, meekness, long-suffering, bearing with one another. Anybody realize that some of these are the fruit of the Spirit? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Yeah. Bearing with one another and forgiving yourselves. If anyone has a complaint against any, then he even says it even stronger. Even if Christ forgave you, you should also forgive. How many times has he taught on forgiveness and then hit it again? Did that right after the, the model prayer in Matthew 7, 6, one of those. It's six. Okay. Putting on a heart or sinking into that heart that is open, not hard, an open, loving heart of compassion. Okay. But you notice that compassion is something you do to somebody else. Usefulness is something you do to somebody else. Humility is something you do in reaction to somebody else. Meekness is something you do to somebody else. Long suffering is something you do to somebody else. Bearing with one another. Forgiving. See, it's all outward. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm interesting this isn't about you it's about them <laughs> you allow the things of the spirit into your soul then and only then can it flow outward okay <laughs> that's that hard now don't worry we're going to hit that pretty we're going to do the chart again so just hang in there not in just a minute verses 14 and 15 are going too fast everything yes Okay, and all these, above all these, put on is the word from before, put on, sink into, become part of love, which is the bond of perfectness. That's an interesting way of putting it. It's a bond of maturity. Mm. It's the bond of phileos, the end result, the bond of where you're going. Okay, uh, I love it. And let the peace of God rule in your hearts, which you were also called in one body and be thankful. This is above all the others, no matter what. The other things, the list that it said, love, joy, peace, long stuff, all that. Just Yeah, yeah. What's the first one? Love. Above all of these, love. love. It's above all the others. It's the foundation of all maturity. How do I know when somebody is mature? They're not thinking of themselves. They're thinking about others. That's a That's a bond of maturity. That's when you know that they're actually growing up it's still something we put on as an identity yeah how many of us have actually put on love as an identity see uh i've been very careful about that been very careful about that and that's that one that actually blows my mind that's that actually i don't i want to say it this way it scares me it doesn't not with fear but right, it right. just nah. okay this thing is it, yeah. It's yeah. big. Okay. By the way, the word there for rule, let the peace of God rule in your heart. It actually means to be an umpire. Let it decide, is that safe or out? <laughs> Not is that a strike or a walk? Okay. It's that, let it rule. Okay. We'd be walking down the street in Russia and just minding our own business, just talking. And also now our peace leaves. It's being an umpire in your life. You don't go down that street. Yeah. You turn around until peace arrives and then you go down that street. Okay. So just like same thing. Let the peace of God rule in your heart. Verses 16 and 17 it says, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. Yeah, it's logos. In all wisdom, teaching and exhorting yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord and everything, whatever you do in word or in work, do all things in the name of the Lord Jesus, giving thanks to God and the Father through him. Now, we've gone over that passage so fast, so many times. But let the word of Christ dwell in you richly. This is not the word of others. 
dwelling in you, mm. which you've listened to them and believed their mm. lies. How much have we let others tell of it? And then we live in that. Yeah. Oh, no. Why don't we find out what the word of God says and let it dwell in you richly? Mm -hmm. Okay. In all wisdom. What's wisdom? Practical application of truth. It gives you a practical application. All wisdom, teaching, exhorting yourselves. It's psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. Wow, that sounds like a much better plan than what I've seen most people think of Christianity. Mm -hmm. As begrudging, but it just you know, all the religion that goes with it. Whatever you do in order and work, do all things in the name of the Lord Jesus. Okay, this is all a total expression of God. It's the Logos. It's the word. Let it all. Okay, whatever you get in revelation of it, but more, there's more, and there's more. Seek more, seek more, seek more. This is how to grow spiritually. This is how to grow up. Okay. And then, of course, in the name of Jesus is still one of my pet peeves. Okay. Because uh, I haven't figured out how to end prayer without saying it. Mm -hmm. But most people say, and I even brought it up on on. A little debate thing I was doing on the phone today and texting. <laughs> this is how many people have you known prayed what was totally unscriptural and wrong prayer and then ended it with in Jesus' name? Yeah. But was it in Jesus' name? No, because they didn't pray as if Jesus were praying. They weren't doing it in the covenant with him. So kind of a problem, child. Two. Yeah. Yeah. My crucifixion is my act of involvement in my crucifixion means I submit to the process. Then he completes the work as I am joined to him. Come on, that's really good. That's mm -hmm. My act of involvement in my crucifixion means I submit to the process and he completes the work as I am joined to him. <laughs> I live in it daily as a fact, by and with faith. And he hides me with Christ in God. Mm. The more you join to him, the better it is. Yeah. Okay. I I want so bad to preach this from rooftops. I mean, to jump up in front of my church and say, folks, listen to this. This is, you know, I, I want this. Because it's true. They're just people are not catching, catching this. Okay. Just think when the church would be at if it was. Yeah. Well, you'd find out. Reached. From bad tree to good tree, I become the tree I eat from. I am the housing of the Holy Spirit Himself. Mm. So His fruit shows up when I am submitted by choice to allow it to happen. Mm. I like that. So therefore, the only tree that produces life is that tree. Ah, is that a tree or broccoli? That's what everybody keeps saying. <laughs> you can broccoli yourselves to death, but that's okay. This is a real tree that's born out of the the tree of the crucifixion. Hi, this is this is it. Broccoli is good for you. Okay, but it won't kill you. Okay. Contrary to what kids think. Kids think broccoli will kill you. So, okay. Okay. That's the end of that. That's the end of the review. Now we get to do something crazy and going on the new stuff because you guys already knew all that. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Chuck is rolling his eyes at me right now. Like, so it's, I love you, Chuck. You're good. Okay. As we go on, let's do Galatians 5 again, 22 and 23. It says, where the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, kindness, goodness, faith, meekness, self-control. Against such things, there's not a law. And the fruit is singular, not plural. But you got to know that each one of them is a character quality of God. Mm, I like that. Okay. Yeah. So this is what makes this really fun. Is that we are taking the character of God himself through us. To other people. That's beautiful. Isn't it? And that just that's just right on. So therefore, these are to be our character. 
This is not just supposed to be something you do. It's supposed to be something you are. Something you, people would contribute to how there would be a character quality test and your test of your, people look at you, oh yeah, they have a character quality of peace. Mm -hmm. Oh, would that be good? Mm -hmm. Even if you say, well, they have a character quality of uh, joy, meekness. Yeah. They have a character quality of self control. Um, yeah. Okay. So, <laughs> how do I get them? Gelato. <laughs> we talked. We talked about this. Okay, already. Verse twenty four says, "But the ones belonging to Christ crucified the flesh, with his passions, and its lusts." The key to the fruit is to die to self. Mm -hmm. The key to the fruit is to die to self. That's what makes it a fruit of the spirit, not just a fruit of you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, here we go. You ready? Hey, everybody. Anybody ever see this chart before? No. Never. Then let me explain it to you. <laughs> okay. The thing that, that, and I didn't start at the beginning on this, because most of us understand this to a degree, okay? Your spirit is born again. Mm -hmm. It is saved. It is sanctified. It is totally, the Holy Spirit lives in your spirit. Your spirit is just saved. Your, your spirit itself is regenerated, born from above. And the mechanism that made that happen is you were united with Jesus in his death, his burial, and his resurrection. That was not something you did. That was something you came to, and he did. You submitted right. to his. My old man, my real, true old man, was crucified with Christ. Mm -hmm. Just dead. Crucified. Dead. My true old man. We do not have a sin nature anymore because your nature is your spirit so do you have a sin nature no do you sin yeah that's why there's sin down there in the body and the devil in the world has a connection to that sin that's in the body it's right there yeah i got it okay do we have sin yes am I, am I a sinner no i am a saint who much to my shame sins mm -hmm. yeah okay so what do you do about this well we we also understand that the heart is the connection between the spirit and the soul. So all these things we've been talking about, heart issues, and put on a heart of compassion and put on a heart of this and heart of that, heart of this, is all because God wants us to have the things of the spirit coming through us into our soul. Mm -hmm. That's the way it's supposed to be. And because of that, we'll get the attributes of God. Just that. Mm -hmm. It's just beautiful. Mm -hmm. But there's a condition known as hardness of heart right. and every one of those little brown lines is a hardness of heart to where the things of the spirit can't make it into my soul in those areas and in those areas i cannot see who i am right right because mm -hmm. who am i the glory of the lord right but whenever christ my life shows up then the real me shows up with him right in glory well because he I'm not completely hardness of heart all the way across the board. There's still little arrows that are poking down in through there. I still have things where the Holy Spirit is coming through into me. Okay. Yeah. So the real issue here is right there in the little choice in the, in the will, you choose to walk in the things of the spirit. And what happens is boom, the Holy Spirit, we do that. The mind of the spirit is life and peace. When I choose the Holy Spirit, Life and peace comes back on me. Life and peace affects my mind. Life and peace affects my will. Life and peace affects my emotions. I am affected by choosing light and peace. Mm -hmm. Who does that choosing? We do. Oh, what, how come it isn't just automatically natural? Because I have to crucify wherever right. there is right. hardness of heart. Right. Now who's doing the crucifying? That's us. Yeah, it's us. He did it at the beginning. He yeah. did the first one yeah. and he gave us everything. Now from here on out, yeah. we are in the position of crucifying right. the flesh because the flesh is where there's hardness of heart. Somebody tell me I'm making sense. You make perfect sense. Okay. Yeah. 
It's always scary when I make sense. Okay. <laughs> but then what happens? Because of my choice of walking in the spirit, then I can have functional kidneys. And of course, I'm not explaining all there is to do about the kidneys. The kidneys are there to do something with the sin. Okay. And what happens? They The sin gets filtered. The defilement is in check. And the sin itself is in check so that I can think straight, I can choose straight, and I can feel straight. When I'm not thinking straight, sin has been released. Mm -hmm. When I'm not wanting straight, mm -hmm. sin has been released. This is when I choose to sin. When my emotions are not straight, that's when mm -hmm. <laughs> you got it. Mm -hmm. Where the sin is released mm -hmm. and I'm not thinking, feeling straight. Okay. Yeah. That's yeah. because we have hardness of heart. Yeah. The hardness of heart is literally stopping us from having life. I can see that. Mm -hmm. So we have yeah. to kill the death. Right. And put the death to death to gain the life. You have to die to die. Yeah. I mean, when you see these, you go, well, that makes total sense. But you get those sentences and write them down on a piece of paper and you're going, huh? You know? Yeah. You got to die to your death. Yeah. The death you chose. Mm -hmm. So you got to choose to crucify the death, which is what? The death is the flesh. So you're crucifying the flesh with its passions and its desires. There it is right there in front of us we are there okay so what happens well i have to crucify those and that brings the healing forgiveness and repentance see i did something different there that i'm gonna, I'm gonna back up and show it to you again because that's the difference the cross there mm -hmm. it's going to choose uh, i went back too far I have to crucify the wounds and choices. Mm -hmm. uh, no. And there, when I bring that, that brings healing, mm -hmm. forgiveness, and repentance to me. And when that happens, it brings getting rid of the hardness of heart in an area. That gets rid of another hardness of heart in that area. And in those areas, I can bring about the salvation of the soul. So everywhere I don't have hardness of heart, I have the salvation of the soul. Mm -hmm. Let I me know. tell you. That's awesome. Mm -hmm. Yes? Amen? Amen. Amen. Okay. Wait, I have a question. Some okay. of those places that they don't always, you don't get a complete salvation of the soul. It's, some of them are in process. Sure. I don't doubt oh, that. Yeah. But they're hard to describe on a chart that way. Right. Okay. <laughs> but to know that that is a process of the death. See, that's why it takes a little while for that little hardness of heart to disappear and bring that salvation mm -hmm. of soul. Mm -hmm. Now, we also know that when we have the salvation of soul, that we can bring it right down into the body, can't we? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I, I think about David, you know, saying, search me, know me. You know, Absolutely. that we're responsible for what's been revealed. <laughs> yes, even more so in the New Testament. Right. Okay. Is because we have the Holy Spirit living with exactly. us. He didn't. Right. Okay. Now, I want everybody to look at the chart. Do your writing. Get your writing done. Here we go. I want you to watch. Because now that we have that happening. Our spirit relates to God, right? Right. Our soul relates to other people. Right. Our body relates to the environment. Everybody with me? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So once I start this thing process happening, then I can have the fruit. Yeah. The fruit is what comes out of our soul to yeah. other people. Mm -hmm. That is the fruit of the spirit is coming through us because we have seen the fruit happen from the spirit into our soul. And that's what we can push out we can put the fruit of the spirit out because it's already affecting me on the end wow awesome isn't that cool mm -hmm. amen yeah i've been playing with this i've been thinking about this band it's mm -hmm. like okay okay let's uh, go on love uh -huh, what is it what you know the first of the fruit of the spirit is love, love. you know <laughs> Good love, you know, 
We need to have one of those, those pruning singers to say that. Very white come out with, okay. So the one thing we are commanded to do above all else, okay? It actually proves our entire Christian validity. No pressure. <laughs> we also found that it's Bible says that love covers a multitude of sins. Well, yeah. Love is what brought me to him, isn't it? Mm -hmm. We love him. Why? Because he first loved us. He, because he first loved us. Okay. He gave us the love to love him with. I'm not going to go through all that. Okay. But the first and foremost indication that God is living through us is love. Mm -hmm. It's the first and foremost indication that God is living through us. Which makes a real interesting problem for us. Why? Because we know something. Isn't it amazing how when we know something, God just, oh, by the way, you knew this. Oh, yeah. Every time you get revelation, the revelation becomes, oh, boy, here we go. Let me bring this one up. John 15, 13 says, Greater love than this has no one that anyone should lay down his soul for his friends. No, what? And we've been pushing on this laying down your soul thing heavy for a long time. I still need to preach it everywhere I go. Okay. It is the most important message. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So laying down what I feel, what I think, and what I want for someone else and picking up what the father feels, what the father thinks, and the, what the father wants for them. This little piece of revelation has revolutionized my whole life, my whole ministry, my whole everything. This is the one. Okay. But what makes this even deeper that we're trying to get across to everybody here today, because you guys heard this how to love message a few times as if you didn't need to hear it again but <clears throat> it requires the crucifixion of our flesh what is it when i lay down my soul to the father what am i doing i'm crucifying what i think pick up what he thinks i'm crucifying what i want pick what he wants i'm crucifying what i feel to pick up what he feels a little bit different angle on it, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Just laying it down. Okay, that's one thing, but crucifying it. Yeah. That's it's a big even, deal. It's even deeper. Mm -hmm. So we just know that who gave us this example on this and who taught us that? Well, Jesus. John 10, Jesus. good shepherd lays down his soul for the sheep. For this reason, my father loves me because I lay down my soul that I may take it again. How did he know the love of the father to him? Because he laid down his soul. Okay. Yeah. Now, he laid down his soul to him. That was a different thing than us laying down our soul. Why? Because our soul needs to be crucified when it goes laid down. His didn't. Right. Okay. Our flesh needs to be crucified. He didn't have any. Right. I lay down my soul on the cross and I die. So if you want to look at laying down your soul as that way, it's laying down your laying yourself down on the cross and die. Only then can he love through me. Okay. Only then can he love through me if I'm dead to me and alive to him. Now, this is a different angle than anybody expected us to do on the love thing, but that's all right, because we're going right back to what, how do you love? Greater love. Mm -hmm. It's laying down your soul. Well, 1 John 3.16, not John 3.16, 1 John 3.16. John 3.16 says, for God so loved the world that he right. gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes into him will not perish, but have everlasting life. That whole thing is continued in 1 John 3.16. Mm. They just linked. And it says, by this we have known the love of God, because that one laid down his soul for us. 
And on behalf of the brothers, we ought to lay down our souls. So since he was the example of the laying down of the soul, then we should be continuing that. Right. We know this by his example. Okay. So we are to be living by his example. Living by his example. Somebody out there is having a conversation and is coming across on the speakers. So, hello, anybody out there that's listening? You're having a conversation that's coming over. Please be quiet or turn off your microphone. Okay, you just They're not listening. Okay. We are to be living by his example. Let's go on. The disciple wants to do everything like his rabbi. The disciple wants to do everything like his rabbi. Uh, Jesus said that it's uh, disciples not going to be more than his master, but it's enough for the disciple to be like his master. What did Jesus do? He laid down his soul for us. What are we going to be doing? Laying down our souls for on behalf of the brothers, not to the brothers, yeah, for the brothers. First John four seven and eight. Um, I am every time I get this, I want to sing it. So. I know, and so does Heidi, because it's it is a song right on the money. It says, "Beloved, let us love one another, because mm -hmm. love is of God, and everyone who loves has been generated from God and knows God. One who does not love does not know God, because God is love." First John mm -hmm. four seven and eight. Mm -hmm. Twice in this chapter it says God is love. Twice. This is a very major deal. If I'm going to love, yeah. whose love am I using? Yeah, yeah. See, I have to be like yeah. God, which his character quality is love. So my character quality has got to be love. Love is not just an action. It's a being. Ooh. That's big. Because love is the greatest way to be like, to be like God. Mm, that's good. Yes. That makes sense. So mm -hmm. has... Which makes this the greatest oh, disqualifier. Than we are. Than, yeah. Because yeah. he's, yeah. He's, this is, you know, this is making, this is making sense, but this is the practical mm -hmm. application of this mm -hmm. is amazing what happens when you walk out the door. Okay. Whom do we love? Yes. <laughs> just yes you don't right. know what they did to me oh we're right back to forgiving others the same way christ forgave us mm -hmm. why because we love them if you don't love them before you forgive them will you truly forgive them right okay mm -hmm. so this whole idea about loving people is kind of a you. kind of a major mm -hmm. qualifier okay mm -hmm. okay do you think that people have trouble with loving someone who has hurt them um, is because they're trying to love them back with solical love and not the love of God. Well, Thinking that the love of God is an emotion, it's coming from your soul, and it really isn't. Mm -hmm. Well, because uh, the solical love still wants something in return. Right. Mm -hmm. And, and that's like that's the issue is God's pure love does not want something yeah, in return. Exactly. Okay. It's for them. What love is because we we distill it down to human love where it's emotion and, and realize that, that's not the love that God is talking about. That's about. what I've been right. talking yeah. about all morning yeah. or well, afternoon. No, I know that, but I'm I mm -hmm. agree with that. Yeah. But I'm just saying that people don't understand mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. God's love is higher. It doesn't require right. It requires the death of your soul, but it doesn't requ require your solical love to right. fulfill well, that. And you'll find that there are emotions that come with it that are wonderful. 
But if it's driven by your emotions, then you're doing it out of self. Yeah, exactly. Or by your own. See, so you got to this and feelings. And, right. and everybody has got to come to the point where they are are working with God right. about loving. Because I I can teach on it all right. day, and it won't make sense. It right. won't won't make. Sense. But this is something only only the Holy Spirit can explain. He can show us because the the thing we have done for about loving is minor compared to the real love of what loving is. Yes. Okay. Do I love my wife? I really pursue yeah. to make sure I love my wife with the love of God, but I know that some of it is the love of Lee. And sometimes she disappoints me. Yeah. Okay. Well, but I also you. understand that she loves me, hopefully with the love of God, because sometimes I disappoint her. Of course. But we, you know, we're trying to pursue this love thing, love thing, love thing. She's easy to love. Piece she's of cake. Yeah. Okay. There's some others that I can name, but they're not so easy to love. Okay. Those ones I have to pursue to lay down my soul for. <clears throat> but to lay down my soul minor. Okay. I lay down a little bit about what I think and a little bit about what I feel, a little bit about what I want. So I can love them a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yes yeah. any part of that just does not sound right yeah. okay okay but that's what we do mm -hmm. yeah so we crucify we don't Heart. crucify the whole flesh we only like crucify one arm of the flesh <laughs> <laughs> well i'm going to crucify this pinky or something well, okay so maybe part part it'll get done yeah if a bit piece at a time yeah, yeah. the other arm we're working on it leg. Hold still. All that custom. Just next one goes through the elbow. Okay. Yes. Ah. Uh, I go through the heart. Because love doesn't start as a feeling. It cannot. It just cannot. So can you die to self so that you can love with your real self? Yes. Yes. Well, yes, you can. You wouldn't have mastered if it wasn't possible. <laughs> right. Okay, so what's the deal is we have to gain his love and the rest will follow. Mm -hmm. Thank you. <laughs> I told you this was going to be one of those, mm -hmm. this is one of those messages. It's just like, okay. What is wild is the, the message I took to build this off of, I cut it in half to do this. Well, you got to go back, aren't you? Oh, yeah, I got more to do. Oh, Next good. week will be another another part of this on how to love thing but it's a we got that love is the biggest subject of the whole universe okay it is the biggest subject and we're trying to break this down to something we can understand and it's just like it's so massive but if i ever learn to love somebody with the amount of love that jesus has shown me wow okay wow which is what we're supposed to be doing yeah. Right. Okay, so um, why do I still want any part of the flesh? I don't know. Why I would want that? It is absolute insanity. But we do it all the time. The only way that this can happen is through real life situations where you're actually taking this and, and God is making it real to you so you mm -hmm. actually see in this situation over here, this is what God's love looks like. Yeah. Right. Because I can't, uh, I mean, this sounds, you might go walk out the door and have, oh, it's the love of God. But until I put in a no, situation you're... where it's right. just mm -hmm. the max, that's not real and becomes real through the trip through the testing and the trying right and this is why we have it. this is why all we can do all i can do is teach it right throw it out there and say okay here's how you apply right. it go out there and you and jesus have to do this together exactly. yeah. because i can't and even show you the person that you would yeah. he wants you to actually yeah and so to. you know right. he may not be finding the hitler of your life to make you right. love them <laughs> right okay or he, or he may so either way, it's going to be, you know, that's between you and him and what he knows you need to learn exactly. to become who you are called to be. Exactly. Okay. Hey, Lee, could yes? I tell a, can I tell a short story? If you make it short. I'll yeah. make it short. Um, 
so my my brother molested me when I was five. Over the years, um, as I walked with Christ, I forgave him. I offered it in a letter, um, tried to have some conversation. He had a very difficult life. He became a drug addict, was put into prison in Texas. Most of the family disowned him because of harm he had caused mom and dad. Well, he had served in the um, Air Force and was stationed on the Philippine Islands and bought all kinds of things for himself and lost most of it over the years because of his lifestyle. But mom and dad had a few things. And literally during the same time that the Lord was showing me that um, he was still abusive, every conversation, every phone conversation, he slipped something in there. And so during the same time that the Lord was basically saying, I have not called you to give him one more minute of your ear, of your life, and allow him to speak those things to you. At the same time, as I was cleaning out my parents' home, because they had both passed, um, I was able to make boxes for all the siblings, and that included him. And I felt myself walk in a place of forgiveness I'd never, a level I'd never felt before because I really did want to bless him by sending him um, pieces of his life. Um, things that had been lost to him. Um, I wished, and as I was packing the box, I, I feel like this, what you're speaking here, is exactly what I felt like I walked through. It was not of me. It was something that came through me that um, could see that he was who he was because of trauma and pain. Um, yeah. And so I sent him, I sent him love, but Perfect. at the same time yeah. blocked his number. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, sometimes, sometimes it's a loving thing to keep people from doing flesh things. Right. Yes. Mm -hmm. So to stop somebody from doing damage is a good thing. So it's mm -hmm. it's hard for people to understand that. But I don't let somebody abuse somebody mm -hmm. and say, well, it's not loving. No, it's not loving to the person they're abusing. Exactly. Okay. So anyway, whatever. But thank you, Patty. That's a new, mm -hmm. good story. So all I can tell you is that. There it is. That's the end of the message for today. Okay. I want I want to know how to make this thing functional for everybody, how to, to be more practical. I don't know how to make it more practical than what we've done today. Okay. Yeah, God's job. And yeah. Well, and no, be... not completely. Yeah. It's the job of the teacher is to do all that bring it out to people the best they can, especially the practical application. But the real thing that it, want to give somebody is let's think about this let's right. let's be something that's we're open to it right. affecting us we're okay even today as you were talking to people is this loving is this the way jesus would talk to them is this how jesus talks to me um we've got to do things by the relationship we have with jesus and no religion absolutely no religion love in religion isn't right Okay. Yeah. There is no love in religion. No. Skilled. Okay. So it's all sorts of different things, but yeah. you got to know God wants us yeah. to have the relationship and bring that out to other people. So I let him be the one to give that to you. So let's pray. Father God, I thank you for what you're doing for us. And Lord, this is, wow, what a discussion. What a, what a thing that you're trying to bring into our lives. But Lord, we are seeing it now. There, there needs to be way more crucifixion of our flesh than we've ever allowed Lord. and lord this is what's the outcome is to be able to have the fruit of the spirit affecting other people working out through our lives to where we are being what is there not just doing it and lord i give you the praise and glory for all of this we thank you lord in jesus precious name well amen amen amen, amen. good work mm -hmm.